Hello, everyone. So we're going to do some basic graphs, and then we're going to transform them, which mean, what that means is basically you're going to move them around to the right, to the left, up and down. So we're going to start with the most basic graph. Uh, this is going to be called a parabola. And what makes it a parabola is the fact that we have x squared. That little square there makes it a parabola. Okay. So let me show you how to start this process. Now, this is the most basic example, and then we're going to work our way up from this one. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a table. And I strongly recommend everyone to do the same. I've seen students that don't follow my, my advice. And what they do is they create a mess in their notes. So please, please make sure that you do this table. It will be a lot easier if you do that. So one of the things you want to do in this case is, is that to recognize, first of all, that the domain of this function is all real numbers. We'll find the range in a bit. But for now, the domain is going to be all real numbers. And what that means, basically, is the fact that now I have no restrictions on x. When the domain is all real numbers, it means I can pick any number that I want for x. It will not be an issue. Later on, I'm going to give you examples where we have to be more careful as to what x values you will pick. And in those cases, the domain is restricted. We'll get to those in a minute. So I'm going to pick negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. This will be five order pairs that we're going to generate, and that should be enough to create the actual graph. Now, you may have a graphing calculator, which is fine, but the graphing calculator will only give an idea of what the actual graph is. To generate the, the order pairs, uh, you're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to do the table, choose the x values, and so on. Now, you may be wondering as to why I chose those values, and you will see in a minute. Okay? So I'm going to do this one at a time. Um, f of negative 2, and be careful. When you're doing this, this gives you 4. Why? Because negative 2 times negative 2 equals 4. OK, this is why we get positive 4 and not negative 4. In the same way, I evaluate f of negative 1. And I get 1. f of 0 will be 0. 0 squared is 0. f of 1 will be 1. And f of 2, in the same way, would be 4. Now, I want you to pay attention to the following. Notice that when I put in negative 2, f of negative 2, I get a 4. And when I put f of 2, f of positive 2, I get a 4. That means something. And you will see that when I do the graph. In the same way, when you put negative 1, f of negative 1, you get 1. When you put f of 1, you also get 1. There's a correlation here. And I want you to pay attention to that. So I'm going to do my best to generate the graph. Remember, this is not a perfect graph. I'm doing my best to write this on the screen on my laptop. So the first one I'm going to plot is 0, 0. This is a vertex. This is the vertex of the parabola. And then from here, I'm going to choose 1 and 2, and then negative 1 and negative 2. And there it is. This is the reason why I chose those numbers, because I chose the vertex to begin with. That was going to be my starting point. That's my vertex right there. And notice where I put it on the table. I put it right in the middle. You want to, you do not want to put the vertex on the top or in the, in the bottom or anywhere else but the middle. This way will help you uh, choose two numbers to the right of 0, in this case 1 and 2 and also two numbers to the left of 0. In this case, we chose negative 1 and negative 2. OK? And so now I'm going to pick plot this point. When is 1 is 1. When is 2 is 4. So it says 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up here. And then I get this parabola. OK? 
and notice that there's some type of symmetry, and this is the why I want to bring I want to bring this up. It's symmetric about the y-axis. You see. Notice that this is four. So it's the y is four when x is two, but also when it's x is negative two. The same goes for one. Is f of one is one, and f of negative one is also one. Why? Because this is symmetric about the y-axis. And what does symmetry means? Symmetry means that if I were to fold this portion, this half of the parabola, across the other side, I will end up with exactly the same area. That's what symmetry means, okay? From the graphing perspective. Um, now, now that you have the graph, then we can see what the range is. It's very easy. The range from here, we can see that it's that is zero and it goes up to infinity. Remember when you're doing the range, you start at the bottom and you go up and it goes up to infinity. So the range will be from zero, including the zero, which is why we're using a bracket and not a parenthesis. And it goes to positive infinity and an infinity, negative or positive infinities, we always use a parenthesis. So that's the range and that's your domain from here. All right, so kind of a, a few things that I wanna mention before I move on to the next example is, please make sure that you put the vertex right in the middle of the table. As well, this way you will, you will be reminded that you have to choose two numbers to the right and two numbers to the left. This way you will have this parabola here. Now, what will happen if you don't follow my instructions? What will happen? And you're very sloppy on the X values that you choose. Well, it is possible that you only choose four or five numbers to the right of the vertex. In which case, if you do that, then you're only gonna create this side of the parabola. See, and what about the rest? It's not there. That's why you have to be organized on the way that you do this stuff. I'm gonna use this same example, but this time what I wanna do is I want to move this parabola two units to the right and one unit up. So in other words, my new parabola the graph of it will look like this, okay? And the question is, how do I do that? Okay, so let me show you, it's very easy. First, I'm gonna write the standard form of a parabola. Where the vertex here is gonna be h comma k. Now you might be wondering, how come here in the parentheses you have x minus h, but your vertex is h and not negative, and not negative h? Well, that's the formula, okay? So you have to switch the sign. Had it been positive, then you will end up with a negative h. The k on the other hand is very simple to remember. If it's positive, it will remain positive. If it's negative, then it will be negative. The one that you have to worry about is what's inside the parentheses here. This is the one you pay attention. This is the one that makes it go sideways. It moves it sideways from left to right, right and left. The K is what makes it go up and down. So if you want to be technical and formal, can I write this one, the one that we just did, in this form? Can I do that? Well, yes. How about if I do this? Let me show you. You see? Where's the vertex? Zero, zero. There is your zero, zero. Okay. So pay attention to that. Be careful where you write the vertex and how you write the vertex. You wanna make sure that you get the right signs on those numbers, okay? 
So now that I have introduced that, let me move on to the next frame. And let's do this. Now remember, what I wanted to do is to take this parabola and I want to shift it two units to the right and one up. So when I graph it, now is this. That's what I want. To make this happen, that means that I need to write it this way. The A is going to be 1. What A I'm talking, what am I talking about? It's this A. Okay. And then I'm going to write X. Now I want to make it move two units to the right. So I'm going to put minus two square. And I want to make it go up one unit. So I'm going to put one. This here is now the function that will represent this graph here. Okay, so I'm gonna move that over and we're gonna do a table for it, okay? So here it is. There. So what's the vertex? That's the first thing you're gonna do. It's gonna be two comma one, okay? Not negative two comma one, 2,1. All right. So now we're going to do the little table here. Since my vertex is 2,1, I'm going to put it right in the middle of the table. 2,1 there. Remember, my domain is all real numbers. And we'll see what the range is once we uh, do the graph. Okay. But the range I can tell you now. It's going to be from 1 to infinity. Now, one thing that I forgot to mention is this. This A is, the, is what determines how wide or how narrow uh, the parabola is. In other words, if it's positive, the parabola will go up. If it's negative, the parabola will go down. The other uh, effect that this number has on the parabola is how wide it is. We'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh, all right. So this time, this parabola is going to go up. Why? Because here, the invisible one, which we don't have to write, by the way, it will make it go up like this. Had it been negative, then it will go down like this. But we'll get to those in a minute. I don't want to jump to many uh, scenarios. I prefer to do one at a time, okay? So let's do that now. So here I have my vertex. I have the domain and the range. I, I will explain how to get the, uh, the range once we get the graph. It will be a lot easier if you do that. So now the question is, what numbers do I choose for my x values? Remember, I need to have at least five of them, five order pairs. I get one for free, though. The one that I always get for free is the vertex. And that's the first one that I need to know what it is. And it's here. Now that I know what it is, then I'm going to choose 3 and 4. That will be the two numbers to the right of 2. And what about to the left of 2? I'm going to choose 1 and I'm going to choose 0. Okay. So think about it. You have 2 here. I'm going to have 3. I'm going to have 4. I'm going to have 1 and 0. There it is. You have to do that. If you don't do that, guys, you're going to make a mistake. You get frustrated. So please, please follow my advice, okay? All right. So now that I know those numbers, then I need to find what is the, the y values, okay? So let's start with 0. So what is f of 0? Oops, what happened here? Oh, okay. f of 0. So there it is. Now, every time that you evaluate a function, by the way, you are, in a way, reviewing the order of operations. This is something that comes up a lot. So notice, this will be 4 plus 1 will be 5. You see that? 5. And I assure you that when I evaluate f of 4, I will also get 5. If you don't believe me, you can do it on your own, and you will see that you will end up with 5 as well. 
All right. So now, so phi, uh, let me see. Ah, four, of course. When you evaluate it at four, you will also end up with five. Okay. Uh, this this is a way of kind of a shortcut, if you will. Okay, because of the symmetry. Now, this one, let me show you the graph. This graph will not be symmetric about the, the y-axis, but it will be symmetric about this new axis. But still, you still have the symmetry, which is why I'm able to know this, you see, because of that. So pay attention to those, they can save you time. And this way you will get it right also. Let's do F01. F01. Oops, I'm running out of space here. 1 minus 2 squared plus 1. I get a 1 squared plus 1. 1 plus 1, 2. So that gives you 2. And I assure you that when you evaluate F03, you will also get 2. This is the beauty of the parabolas. Okay? So I'm going to do my best to do zero, zero sketch. I'm going to erase some of this stuff because I need the space. Here it is. Erasing all of this stuff here. And I expect you guys to watch this video not at once, but in little sections. It'll take five minutes, ten minutes. You know, I don't recommend you guys to watch this the whole time, the whole video all at once. So here's my vertex. I'm going to represent it by a V. So that's one, two, one up right here. Then I'm going to evaluate this at zero. When it's X is zero, my Y is five. So when this is zero, uh, let's say this is, let's say this is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So this parabola is going to touch this uh, Y axis here. When it's two, I get Sorry, when it's one, I meant to say, is two. So when it's one, you get this here. Now, this is going to be symmetric. So this is two, this is one, so I'm going to have three and four. So now it's going to be two, and then five. And there you have your parabola right here, you see? And what is your new axis of symmetry? It is not the y-axis anymore. And that's because we shifted her away from the origin. But the new axis of symmetry will be x equals 2. Where did this 2 come from? It came from here. You see this? That's the new axis of symmetry. And it's symmetric about the axis x equals 2. Remember that when they ask you for the axis of symmetry, do not just write 2. That will not be the answer. You have to write the equation x equals 2. Okay? Remember that. So, again, let me emphasize and point out again the shortcut that I took. I evaluated this first at f of 0. Then f of 4 will also be 0. I mean, f of 4 will also be 5. At f of, five, at f of 1, I end up with 2. That means that at f of 3, I will also get 2. See? But again, that is if you do this table correctly. If you're sloppy on the numbers that you choose for your x's, it's, it's a different story. And I hope that you see the point. This will come with more practice and practice and practice. All right. So what if now I wanted to create a parabola? that goes down number one i want to create a parabola that goes down like this that is shifted three units to the left one two three this is negative three here and i'm going to shift it one unit down two units down why not right here and it's going to go down like this okay so the function for that, and let's assume that the a is 1 for now. 
in what A I'm referring to, this one, okay, that, that A. Assume that for now the A is one. So, first of all, let's do the easy part. I know that if this is going down, uh, this will be negative. So in this case, it will be actually negative one. The A will be negative one. Do you have to write the negative one there? No, you just have to write a negative. That will be enough. Now, if it's negative two, negative three, then you have to write. All right, so now, what do I write inside the parentheses? Well, it was shifted from the origin three units to the left. You see? This negative, guys, is from the formula. Now, this point here is negative three. Now, you know what's going to happen. Negative times negative, it is going to turn into positive. You see? Now, it was shifted also two units down. So this guy has to be negative two. So there is your function that generates this graph. And what will the vertex be? Well, the vertex will be, remember, you see this here? There, negative three, comma, negative two. And from there, you can do your table, just like I did before. So this is going to take a little bit of practice, but the point is that once you learn how to transform one of those functions, then the technique applies to the rest. And what I mean transform is by shifting them to the right, to the left, up and down, sideways, and so on. All right, so let's do a different type of function. Let's do this one. Now this is x cubed, not x squared. And the graph of this now is not a parabola anymore. The graph of this, it looks like this. And this point here at the vertex is not a vertex, vertex anymore. It's called the inflection point. Remember, it's the inflection point, not a vertex anymore. And notice that this table that this graph, I'm sorry, the domain is still all real numbers. And the range is also all real numbers. Okay. So let's do a table. So in this case, first thing you want to do is find the inflection point, which is zero, zero. And same thing, I'm going to choose 1 and 2, negative 1, negative 2. Because this is, a, this is the most basic example. Uh, this gets complicated when the inflection point is not at the origin, and then you have to be careful what, choose, what numbers to choose. All right, so f of negative 2. This gives you negative 8. At negative 1, it gives you negative 1 f of 1 gives you 1, f of 2 gives you 8. You no longer have the luxury or the shortcuts, so to speak, that you had when you were doing a parabola. Now, notice this is negative 8, this is 8. Not the same number, not the same y value. And so when you plot this, here's 1 is 1, 1 is 2, it's all the way here at 8. When it's negative 1, you get negative 1. When it's negative 2, it gives you negative eight and so on, okay? Now, what will happen if I had instead this? Let's look at it. What will, what will be the effect of that negative in front, okay? So in this case, my inflection point is still at the origin. Choose also 1 and 2, negative 1, negative 2. So now let's do this carefully here. F of negative 2. Be careful here, okay? One thing that you do not want to do is that you do not want to multiply those two negatives, those two negative signs, negative and negative, positive, no. 
remember at this point, basically what you're doing is the order of operation. And that means that you do the parentheses first, then the exponent. Well, in this case, I'm just putting it a negative two. So that means there's not much to do inside the parentheses. Then the following step will be to evaluate the exponent, take care of the exponent. So if negative two to the third power would be negative eight. Now you're allowed to multiply the exponents and therefore you get with a positive eight. Negative times negative gives you positive. Now, do you have to write positive eight? No, eight is enough, okay? So now you have eight. I'm gonna do this fast now, f of negative one, same reason, okay? Now you end up with one. So this will be one. This will be now negative one, negative eight. So let's see what the graph now looks like. Here's the vertex. One, two, negative one, negative two. So now uh, negative two, I get all the way up to eight. Let's say this is eight. At negative one, you get one. At zero, you get zero. At one now, you get negative one. And then you get all the way here. So notice that this graph now is inverted. Let me go back to the previous one. Then what that means is that this is flipped like this. And that was done by putting a negative in front of the x cube. That alone will have that effect on the graph, okay? All right, let's say that now I want to create a cubing function that where the inflection point is at, I'm gonna make this up, five comma two. By the way, this is not where five comma two is. Five comma two is right here. Okay, I don't want you to get confused. And wait a minute, he told me that five comma two is on the fourth quadrant. No, 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 no. All right. So I want to have. I want to come up with the function whose graph is, uh, whose inflection point is at five comma two. So the graph is gonna look like this. Okay, so what do you think it's gonna be? And let's assume that A is one for now. One, my inflection point is that. So I'm gonna put, notice that it was shifted from here, five units to the right. So I'm gonna put minus five, cube, right? Not square, but three, a three cube. And it was lifted up two units up. There we go. That would be the graph of this. Okay, notice again that since it was shifted sideways, specifically five units to the right of the origin, then inside the parentheses, I put x minus five. It had been shifted here, then it would have been something like this, for instance. Oops, that's a horrible graph. I apologize for that, that's horrible. I don't know what happened to my pen, okay? Something here. A graph would have been like this, right? Well, in that case, it would have been shifted five units to the left. Now, if it's shifted five units to the left, that means that this guy is x negative five, right? So you would do this. And of course, negative times negative gives you positive. Remember, you have to do the inside the parentheses first. So in this case, the answer would have been x plus five plus two. Now, here is how you get this into a plus five. You see that? Negative times negative, positive five, and that's how you end up. But remember, that means that the graph has been shifted to the left and not to the right, okay? All right, let's do another type of graph. Let's do um, the absolute value graph. And let's put a three there. 
okay? This is the absolute value value. The absolute values, the shapes of the absolute value functions are these. Goes up, or sometimes they go down. And so let's do a table. Oops, what happened here? Okay, so I'm gonna do a table. And I'm going to write the vertex. The vertex here, guys, will be zero, zero, similar to the parabola. Okay, so now we can call it back again a vertex. I'm going to choose negative one, negative two, one, and two. Okay. So there you have same thing. You see that now you're going to start noticing a pattern, how to choose the right numbers, how to make sure that you get the right vertex. The, the, starting, the starting point of this is the following. First, you need to know that the shapes of the absolute values are B. That's a must. Because if you don't know that, then you're not there yet. Second thing you need to know is what the vertex is. Because without the vertex, then do you know what numbers to choose? If you don't know that what the vertex is, you might choose numbers all the way to the right and never to the left of the vertex. And that's going to create a problem for for graphing the actual graph, okay? So now let's do this, f of, f of, uh, let's erase this one here. I need a space. f of negative two. And this is where guys, I would hate to see anyone make a mistake in the process of evaluating a function. Okay. First, again, you have to do the absolute value is the equivalent, equivalent of the parentheses in the sense that that is something that you have to do first before you multiply times three. So what is the absolute value of negative two? The absolute value of negative two is two. Notice, I got rid of the absolute value bars. Why? Because I evaluated the absolute value of negative two, which is two. Now I'm ready to multiply three times two is six. So now I put a six here. And I assure you that it will be the same six when you evaluate it at two. For the same reason, reasons as when I did the um, parabolas. Okay, this will be six. When it's negative two, absolute value negative two, I mean, absolute value negative one. It's one. So you write three times one is three. So you get three. And so that will be the same value here when uh, X is one, so it will be three. So now you have this parabola. And remember that we have taken into account the three. That plays a role. Do not ignore that. Don't forget about the three. The three plays a role. What it did is, is that this numbers grew by a factor of three, okay? If that three was not there, then instead of having a six, you would have ended up with an, a two. Instead of having a three here, you would end up with a one and so on, okay? So the three plays a huge role. You cannot ignore them. Again, please do the table, I beg you, okay? All right, so now that you have this a table in the order pair. So we're going to do the origin, uh, one and two, and then negative one, negative two. So when it's one, it's three. One, two, three. When it's two, it's six. That's three, four, five, six. So all, all the way here. So this will be half of the V shape, and the other half will be here. Same thing as the parabola in terms of uh, symmetry. The y-axis in this case is once again symmetric as the axis of symmetry. And by the way, just in case you ever have to come up with the equation of the axis of symmetry in this case, which is the y-axis, the equation of that is x equals zero. Don't forget that, okay, please. All right, now what is the range? We know the domain is going to be all real numbers, no restrictions on the x. See, when there's no restrictions, the domain is a beautiful thing. 
Well, what is the range? Well, the range starts at zero and it goes up to infinity. So I'm gonna write brackets, comma, zero, comma, infinity, parentheses. Again, I cannot emphasize the reason as to why I'm using a bracket at zero and not a parenthesis. The reason why is because I'm including the zero. Therefore, I'm using a bracket. If zero was not included here, then I would use a parenthesis, but that's not the case in this example, okay? All right, um, let's do the same idea here. Let's do this. Um, I want to have a vertex of a V-shape graph facing down like that, okay? And this will be three, and this here will be negative two. So my vertex here will be three comma negative two. How do I form the actual function that generates this graph? Let's do it here. Let's assume again, this time that A is one. That A is what makes it, they call it the vertical stretch, okay? All right, so I'm not gonna put the one, but I'm gonna put absolute value. Let's do the easy one. That's what makes it go down. See, it will shift the three units to the right, two units down. Here's the thing, what goes inside the absolute values? It's gonna be X, since it was shifted from the origin, three units to the right, I'm gonna write X minus three. That's it. That will make it go to the right, okay? What if it was here instead? Well, in that case, let's call it g of x instead of x, another function. It would have been x plus three minus two. This would have made, that would mean uh, that it made it go three units to the left, okay? So pay attention closely to this. This is what makes it go sideways. Well, it can only be either to the right or to the left. That's what means going sideways. And that is where you have to pay attention to this. This here, what makes it go up and down is easy to remember, okay? If it's negative, it goes down. If it's positive, it goes up. Easy to remember. This one, on the other hand, is the one that gets a lot of students. They forget. They see a positive three and they think that means to the right. It's actually the opposite. So when you come across that, pause, breathe deeply, and just remember what we've been doing so far, okay? Let's do now um, another function, another type of function. This one is the square root function, okay? All right, the square root function. Now, this one, guys, unfortunately, the domain is not all real numbers because it's a square root we do not want to end up with a complex function. We don't do complex functions in uh, undergraduate. Well, there are some courses in undergraduate that is called complex analysis, but we don't do that at this level. The knowledge that you have about complex is, is complex numbers, not complex functions. So we don't do that. Because of that reason, we want to make sure that the radican, the radicans is the is whatever's inside the square root. We want to make sure that the radicand is always greater than or equal to zero to avoid a nightmare. You do not want to end up with complex function at this level. We're not doing that. The function that we do uh, at this level is are called real functions. Yes, you have some basic knowledge of complex numbers, but that's at the number level not at the function level, two different things, okay? So that means that the domain then is from zero to infinity, okay? So that tells me that now I have to be very careful. How do I choose my numbers? 
this time I'm going to choose the at most left number, which happens to be zero. And I'm going to put it right on the top, not in the middle like I did before. I'm going to put it right on the top. And then I'm going to start evaluating f of zero, zero, f of one, one. Now I could choose two. Let's do that. And I will end up with a square root of two. That's okay. I could choose three and I will end up with a square root of three. That's okay. I could choose four and I will end up with a perfect square, which happens to be square root of four is two. See? All of that is fine. But if you're graphing this manually or you're using some type of software like we are, then it's, it's okay to use any of those numbers. You know that in Alex, you have this little feature where you're allowed to input anything you want. So for instance, if you had to input this number, you can do that really easy. By the way, two comma square root of two is not in the fourth quadrant. I'm just using that as an example, okay? So now I start plotting these numbers here. And this is what the shape of this graph is, okay? It's not a line. Let me do it again. It's not a line, of course. In fact, this graph is half of a parabola that is sideways. But you learn that later, okay? Where's the other half? Here. But we're only doing the upper half in this example. Now, if you had a case where you had a negative in front of the square root here, then the parabola will go down like this. You see? The, one with, the, the first one we did is the one at the top. So this one is square root of x. The one at the bottom would have been negative square root of x. And by the way, you cannot do the both of them at the same time because in that case, the graph will not be a one of a function, and that's an issue. Okay, you can you can only do half of it <coughs> when they are sideways. Okay. So now, what if, for instance, I wanted to generate the function of a parabola where the vertex was let's say three and two and it started there right what is the what is the function of this well let's do this that would have been let's assume again that a is one that would have been a square root of x minus three plus two again this is what makes it go sideways and this is what makes it go up or down. In this case, it went up two units and it went three units to the right of the origin, which is why I put X minus three. Notice that it's the same thing for all of them. What changes here, guys, is the shape of the functions. And we have many. We have five or six so far, maybe five. But what is constant is how you shift them around. Once you know how to shift one of them, it's the same for all the rest. What changes is the shape of the function, okay? All right, now let's do one exercise. I'm gonna show you this. I'm gonna show you this because this happened in class. Let me show you what happened. I had a function like this and a function like this. And I hope that you know that they're two different functions. They have the same shape. That's what they have in common. And I call both of them f of x. It doesn't matter. But they're not the same function because notice on the first one, I have inside the square root, I have x minus 2. And the second one, inside the square root, I only have x. And that is not the same thing. In fact, let me go ahead and graph this quickly. So this graph, I'm going to graph number two first. This graph was shifted down to units only. It was not number two. Graph number two was only shifted two units down, not sideways. Okay. So the graph of this will be like this. Where the graph on number one was shifted two units sideways from the origin to the right. So one, two. 
Do you see the difference? So do not get confused here. Pay attention closely as to what's inside the square root and what is not. You see this negative two was not inside the square root, which is why the graph went down two units. And this time, in number one, f of one, uh, f of x equals the square root, square root of x minus two, this time, this thing is inside. And that only made it move two units to the right. Now, let's say that you didn't have the graph. Let's say that you didn't know what the graph was. And let's say what the question was only find the domain. So I'm gonna erase the graph. In fact, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm gonna use a different color, okay? Let's say that you want only the domain of the first function. Well, the domain of the first function will be x minus two greater than or equal to zero. Well, where did that come from? It came from here, see? And then I solve for x. And you can see that your domain starts at two and it goes to infinity. So your domain will be from two to infinity. That is needed because if you need to create a table, we'll do one shortly here. That will be two, three, four, five, whatever you want to write. Your utmost left point here will be negative, uh, will be two. So when x is two, you get zero. See, that's the height, zero. When it's three, uh, three minus two is one, so the square root of one is one. And when f of two will be, this is what I'm doing so that you know. Sorry, f of four, I meant. You see? And I, the process continues, right? Uh, when it's two, f of two will be two minus, five minus two is three, but square root of three. It continues. But now you know that you can only choose numbers from two and on, nothing to the left of two. And that's why you need to find the domain. If you don't know what the domain is, how do you know what numbers to choose? You don't, okay? That's why we emphasize the importance of the domain more than ever, because now it's needed for you to choose the right numbers, okay? Let's talk about two. What is the domain number, uh, number two, okay? All right, let's see here. Let me erase this. All right, so how do we, how do we find the domain of two, um, of function two? Well, this time, what's inside the square root here is only x, so that's it. And you might say, well, what happened to the negative two? The negative two is not inside the square root, so it doesn't play a role in finding the domain. It did play a role when you graphed it because it made it go from here, it made it go down. That will affect the range, but not the domain. So what is the domain here? It's from zero to infinity. Now, what is the range? Okay, that's a good question. The range will be from negative two to infinity. What about the range of this one that I didn't do? This is domain, remember. The range will be from zero. And you will say, wait, 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 wait I don't see a zero. How about this? Does that make you feel better? There it is, you see? Zero to infinity. That tells you the height. The height here is zero and it goes up. The height here is negative two and it goes up. So there you go. So do not confuse the two thinking that they're two functions, two, two, two different things. All right, let's do another one. Just find in the domain because I think that's gonna be something that will be beneficial to you. Suppose you had this, and the only question is not to graph it, just the domain, just the domain, find the domain, find the domain. Well, what is it? Well, what is the radicon? That's the question you should ask. Well, the radicon is 4x plus 4. So I take it here, I write it down here, and I put this condition. This condition, again, remember, is to avoid ending up with a complex function. We don't want to do that. Okay? So that's why we put greater than or equal to 0. All right. So now I need to solve for x. Let 
Let me bring it up here. Divide by four. What do I have? X has to be greater than or equals to negative one. How do you write that in interval notation? Well, it starts at one, sorry, negative one, at one, negative one, and it goes to infinity, okay? That's your domain. So what would be the most left point in this case if you were to do a table? Negative one, then you can choose negative one, negative zero, one, two, and then that will work. Now you may, you may be wondering, wait, what happened to the three? Nothing. It did not affect the domain at all. What about the negative one? The negative one here doesn't affect the domain. That affects the range. The range there will be from negative one to infinity. You see? But this is the range, not the domain. Okay? So this is going to take a lot of practice, and I hope that you watch this not all at once, but gradually. Okay? And little by little, you will see that you will get used to this. Uh, here's another function. This is the cube cubic function, the cube root, not the square root, the cube root. And let me show you what the graph is. This time, the domain is all real numbers. And the range is also all real numbers. One, what's the difference? What's the difference between the square root and the cube root? Huge difference. The square root, the index is two, even though you don't write it, by the way. That's why you, you might not know the index is two. Uh, but it is two. For the cubic root, for the cube root, it is three. So you have to write it. So now, because it's an odd index, it's three, when I put in a negative number into the cube root, I get a negative number out. I do not end up with a complex number. Okay? And that's a huge difference. So for instance, this time, by the way, this whole vertex right here, actually maybe the inflection point as well, not the vertex. Okay? Um, so in this case, if I were to do a table, since the domain is all real numbers, then I can choose the inflection will be 0, 0, 1, 2, uh, negative 1, negative, let's do negative 8. You will see what happens. And let's do, uh, let's do positive 8. And why could I choose 8? You will see in a minute. All right. So what is the cube root of negative 8? What is that? The cube root of negative 8. is negative two. Why? Because you can take negative two three times and the answer will be negative eight. So this is negative two, negative one, one, and two. And so now, there you, there you have your graph. Remember, the cube root as the shape of it. It's not a parabola. It's not the V shape. Clearly, it's not a line. But remember this. Now, what will happen, for instance, if I want to generate the function of a graph that goes like this? In this point, I'm going to tell you what this point is. This is going to be 4, and this will be 3. So that will be f of x. The cube root of x minus 4 plus 3. Why minus 4? Because I moved it 4 units to the right from the origin. And I move it 3 units up. So there it is. You see that it's the same as the other ones. The only thing that is different here is the shape. Okay? So I hope this helps, guys. Um, I'm going to be posting this soon. You can watch it. And good luck to all of you. Okay?